Welcome back to the AutoLux Tidbits, automotive information and stock tips from the AutoLux.net website. I am your host, as always, the doctor to the automotive scene, Mr. Everett J. himself, coming to you from AutoLux.net. Today we're going to take a look at what's going on in the market today. We found out that there are EVs in the Indian market. The Indian market believes that hybrids can be bypassed completely and they could just move right into the electric world. This will put a hamper on companies like Honda, Toyota, and even Suzuki with their hybrid products already for sale in India. This is good news for companies like Tesla, but unfortunately our next tidbit comes from Tesla who may be losing some ground within their entry to the Indian marketplace because their products, especially the Model 3, is too low for speed bumps on the major highways in and around India. So Tesla is now looking into this issue to raise their car by 25 millimeters in height to ensure that their products can be sold within the Indian marketplace. This could pose a problem to them in their initial release, bringing down some sort of their Indian value. Next, we move into Neo. I don't know if you saw our stuff yesterday on the Autolux website and Facebook social media page. Neo is going to be moving into Norway. Norway is a country that is all about green cars. They are. They're one of the top markets in the world for green products. They're now surpassing the 50% mark for sales in that country. And Neo, one of the biggest players in the green market from China, is going to be moving in there. So watch out for your Neo stocks this fall as they enter Norway and it starts exploding. Tata has released the new punch. It's going to be coming to the market this fall and this is going to be a major punch into the subcompact micro segment which is growing in the Indian marketplace. This is a product range that Tata really needs to get into if they want to take out strangleholds from companies like Toyota, Nissan, Honda, even Mahindra from owning the subcompact market. And with Citroen releasing the new C3, there's more of a drive for Tata to be in there. The homegrown guy's got to get his act together to punch through the rest. Honda, as we saw yesterday, released the brand new Passport Trail Sport. Now, if you don't know anything about this thing, the Passport is their mid-size counterpart, just above the CRV and just below the Pilot. Passport brings back a name from the original SUV shared, sharing its platform with the Zuzu Rodeo. Now, why don't we say this is going to be a major increase for the stock and the sale of the Passport? It's a trail sport. It's nothing more than adding a trail rated badge to a Jeep Compass. A couple more features to make it stand out from the crowd. You're not really going to win over a lot of people, thus not increasing your stake in the marketplace. Sorry, Honda, you're about to fall off the market. Nissan got some pretty bad news today from their former CEO, Carlos Gosh, as he stated that Nissan is losing its products. It's becoming a boring and meaningless company. Now, as Renault and Dacia are moving, Nissan seems to be falling behind the rest. And most of the designs and product range is now going the way that Toyota was in the early 2000s. Bland and boring. So he does have a point here. It can start bringing down the decrease in the market for Nissan stocks. Lamborghini's on a high right now as they are putting out their teaser videos for the restoration project that they are playing with right now. We don't know what it is, but everybody is glued to the Lamborghini posts Wanting to know what it's going to be. Is it going to be a rebirth of the original Bertone concept for the Lamborghini Countach? Or is it just going to be a rehash of the original Lamborghinis? Hell, it could even be the Espada coming back. Who knows? But we're all glued to find out what's it going to be. BMW has stated today that their vehicles don't need to go more than 375 miles of range. This works out to about... 603.5 kilometers. For myself, that's pretty decent considering the fact that I have family that lives over 
the 500 kilometer mark away from myself. So these vehicles can be utilized for highway movement. The unfortunate thing is if they're not going to make them go further than that, then they're not trying to make themselves better than the internal combustion engine vehicles that are existing today, whereby RAV4 on highway driving can get upwards of 700 kilometers per tank. Now, electric vehicles still need to come to terms with the fact that the recharging still isn't up to code with fueling of internal combustion engines. And until that comes through, they're still not as comparable, even for highway driving. So sorry, BMW, 375 miles range is great, but it's still not going to put me behind the seat of an electric vehicle for highway traveling. And last but not least, I get updates all the time from XOS. I don't know if you know who XOS Transports is. They used to be Titan Trucks. Thor Trucks, sorry. XOS Trucks is their own. Now, has now signed a partnership partnership with Cox Automotive for the refurbishment of their batteries at the end of their cycle life so they can reuse them as power sources further down the road, thus taking a little bit of the carbon footprint away from the batteries. Because we all know at the end of the life, batteries from these vehicles is going to become a major problem in the future of tomorrow. That's all I got for September 23rd. 2021 from the Autolux Tidbits.